Crying is a natural physical reaction that we all have in response to strong and overwhelming emotions. It can be caused by physical pain, such as falling off a bicycle, by emotional suffering, such as bereavement, the end of a relationship, but also by the emotions felt while reading a book or watching a drama movie. But there are also tears of joy, which we shed when we laugh out loud or when a child is born. In this video, we will go to see how the mechanism of crying works, why we cry, and many other curiosities. The tear film is made up of three layers, mucus layer, aqueous layer, and lipid layer. Tears are made up of 98% water and the remaining 2% of a small percentage of sodium chloride, which gives them their salty taste, as well as proteins, urea, glucose, lactoferrin, and lysozyme, a bactericidal enzyme incapable of destroying numerous bacterial species. Contrary to what one might think, there are three types of tears. Basal tears, reflex tears, and emotional tears. They are used to keep your eyes lubricated and nourished, to prevent them from drying out completely. They serve as a defense mechanism when your eyes are exposed to irritants, such as smoke, bright light, perfumes, or when we cut an onion. Are produced when you are sad, happy, or when you experience intense emotions. According to some studies, emotional tears also contain hormones that are not found in the other two types of tears. One of these is leucine encephalin, endorphin, and natural pain reliever, capable of reducing pain and improving mood, thus helping the body to relax and return to its normal state. In the case of reflex tears in the presence of an irritant, the nerves of the cornea are stimulated and communicate this irritation to the brainstem, which will stimulate the lacrimal glands and consequently the lacrimation. In the case of emotional tears, crying occurs thanks to the connection between the nervous system and the limbic system, a complex of brain structure that play a key role in emotional reactions. When we experience any emotion, the amygdala is activated a small oval-shaped brain area considered to be the emotional center of the brain. It processes the emotion felt and sends a signal to the hypothalamus for the activation of the autonomic nervous system that controls the lacrimal glands through the production of the neurotransmitter acetylcholine. In simpler words, our emotional reactions activate the nervous system, which in turn causes the tear system to activate. Tears are constantly produced by the lacrimal glands, located above the eyes, to which a lipid component is added by the accessory glands. Everything then passes through a system of small tear channels that originate near the lower inner corner of the eyelids and are then collected in the lacrimal sac, a real reservoir for tears. When they receive the stimulus, the lacrimal sac pushes the tears outwards thanks also to the orbicular muscle of the eye during the blinking of the eyelids. The tears thus flow into the nasolacrimal duct and then travel to the nose and throat. Meanwhile, new tears are produced by the lacrimal glands and the process begins again. You could cry for hours and hours and your tears would never end. Your body produces around 120 liters of tears every year. Now that we have seen how the crying mechanism works, let's try to understand why we cry. What are emotional tears really for? Emotional crying is one of the most fascinating mysteries of the human body that has not yet been fully explained by science, and it is believed that it is influenced by biological, social, and psychological factors. Let's see some theories. According to some researchers, crying is a social signal to get help from others, a real call for help to capture their attention and receive consolation. Tears thus promote social bonding and human connection. Crying is a clear visual signal which signals to yourself and other people that something is wrong and that at least temporarily it is beyond your ability to cope. Tears help communicate feelings when words aren't enough. For Voltaire, tears were the silent language of pain. Crying can make others empathetic and compassionate towards you. Not only that, emotional tears compared to the other two types of tears have a higher content of prolactin hormones, adrenocorticotropic hormones, leuencephalin, potassium, and manganese, which make them more viscous. 
They therefore stick more to the skin and flow more slowly along the face, making them more easily visible to others. Emotional tears contain stress hormones, such as cortisol and natural pain relievers, that allow you to release all the accumulated tension. According to some studies, a good cry can make you feel better, as the hormones associated with stress are eliminated. However, it does not always have benefits on mood, as its effects depend on the characteristics of the individual, the triggering event, and the reactions of the observers. Crying is part of the healing process, as it helps restore emotional balance. Tears are often associated with a cathartic and soothing value, capable of washing the soul and purifying it from emotions held back for too long. According to a study conducted by researchers at the University of Tilburg in the Netherlands, women cry 30 to 64 times a year, for an average of 6 minutes, while men cry only 6 to 17 times a year, for about 2 to 3 minutes. Experts don't know exactly why, but some reasons may be that men have larger tear ducts, so they have to accumulate a lot more tears before they come out. Men have more testosterone, which tends to inhibit crying. Men have less prolactin, a hormone produced by the pituitary gland that can promote crying. Not only that, men cry less than women because of the false belief that teaches men that crying is a symptom of little manhood and weakness. It is a die-hard male stereotype. Crying is one of the most natural gestures in this world, both for women and for men, and it is no coincidence that it is the first thing we do when we come into the world. As children, it is a way to communicate our needs, as adults, our emotions. Holding back tears means repressing these emotions, suffocating them within us, and accumulating them in the form of stress, anxiety, and pain. Crying is a real release valve for the body, 